Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll take that promotion. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier that I've had the opportunity to work with uh, you, Ambassador Pyatt, in your role in Ukraine. I thought you did a, a very good job there, and particularly, you know, advocating a stronger position vis-a-vis -vis Russia. Uh, and I am glad you're stepping up to do this. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here, though, a little bit. Uh, you said, uh, I've seen how Russia weaponized energy. We need to free Europeans of malign actors like Russia. Um, that's good. I, I just wonder if, if we're doing that. And I think about Nord Stream 2, what we did there. I mean, what this administration thought, as I understand it, is that if they approved Nord Stream 2, which previous administration had disapproved, that somehow that would uh, make Russia a better partner. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think it made Russia a better partner? So, Senator, let me start by saying thank you to you and all the members of the committee for the tremendous support that I enjoyed as U.S. Ambassador in Ukraine. Um, I, it made an extraordinary difference in the effectiveness of our diplomacy and our effort to support the choices of the Ukrainian people. On the question of energy, I'll, I'll say a couple of quick things. Um, first, you know, Nord Stream 2 was a bad deal. I wish it didn't take this brutal war to make the rest of the world understand that so clearly. You know, um, let me just, let me just, uh, I've only got a few minutes here, but not just the rest of the world. I, I, what I'm asking you really is what lessons did you learn from that and what did the United States learn from it? Because I think we made a, a mistake. I mean, some people say it gave Putin a green light. I don't go that far. I think he was, he was seeing a green light everywhere he looked, uh, but that was one of the reasons I think he decided, well, this is an indication, you know, that Europe and the United States are, are not going to stand up to me because I've weaponized energy effectively. They've even now approved Nord Stream 2 to make them more dependent on Russian oil. Is that the lesson you get from it? So, Senator, I, I, would, I would say Russia's manipulation continues today. You see it in the reduction of energy supplies. 40% reduction yeah, um, on even, Nord Stream 1. Even now. And, and let, me, um, let, let me ask you that, because, I, 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 again, I, I don't see you're going to answer my first question directly. Um, but do you think we should do something about Nord Stream 1? I think we need to make sure that we do everything possible to ensure that people in Europe and everywhere else remember the way they felt on the 25th of February. That is to make sure that we make sure that nobody ever again says that Russia can be a reliable energy supplier, that we do everything possible to reduce Russian revenues from oil and gas, while also avoiding further disruption of a highly disrupted global energy marketplace. Let me just suggest that we're doing the opposite in some regards, um, not with regard to Nord Stream 2 anymore, although we did, um, thanks to the Germans finally deciding, uh, rightly so, uh, that's not the issue. But last week, the Biden administration, Treasury Department, announced an extension of HC licenses through December 5th. This is allowing energy transactions from any tra transactions to continue to be exempted from sanctions. Um, it otherwise would have ended tomorrow, June 24th. We've extended that license. So these Russian banks are now able to transact um, energy deals and support the, again, the continued reliance on, on Russian energy. I pushed Treasury on this and was told the decision was made based on Europe's phased in of the energy embargo, the oil embargo uh, in particular. and. Um, Again, $870 million a day. That's what I'm told is the average daily receipts that Russia is receiving with a nice margin. Um, and that is one reason you see the ruble gaining strength. Uh, that's why you see the Russian economy not being nearly as debilitated as the Ukrainian economy. Um, and, you know, frankly, they're not feeling the pressure. So what do you think about that? Should that license have been uh, renewed uh, that was set to expire tomorrow? So, Senator, I wasn't part of those policy del deliberations. I don't have the benefit of all the perspectives, so I can't address that. What I will say is that it's very clear to me that we're in the early stages of this campaign, um, and that if you look at what's happening in the Russian oil and gas industry, the gradual European phase out, the European decision on insurance for seaborne Russian oil, um, the disengagement of international companies from the Russian oil and gas industry, which is taking away technology and will inevitably damage Russia's ability to produce oil and gas, 
All of these things will raise the cost for Vladimir Putin of the outrageous events that have unfolded since the 24th of February. Well, as you know, I think we should be more aggressive, and uh, I hope you will be. And, you know, despite all the things you're saying, they're doing just fine. And it's not just China and India that's providing all these resources to fund the war machine. It's our, our allies in Europe and elsewhere. Um, so um, I have lots more questions uh, about Hungary and about the IMF. Hopefully, we have a second round. And uh, again, I'm, I'm glad you're stepping up. Uh, I hope you will be as aggressive as I saw you in Ukraine, where you actually helped push the administration policy toward a more realistic view of Russia. I want to see the same thing with regard to your new role uh, with regard to our energy crisis we face. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.